Hey guys, it's Saturday, and that means it's time for me to talk about an episode of a superhero animated television series. Today, I will be talking about the two-part Batman the Animated Series episode, Feet of Clay. To start off, I want to mention that half of this two-parter is written by comic book legend Marv Wolfman. I don't often pay attention to who wrote or directed what episodes, but this time around, Wolfman's name caught my eye. I don't really have more to say about this other than I think it's neat that this show wasn't afraid to get people who had worked in the comics in the past to work on this show. Since I don't usually keep up with the credits, I don't know how true this is, but I believe this is the first comic book writer to work on this show, which is kind of cool. So back to the episode. I'll quickly sum up what happens, just in case you have not seen this episode, or you have, and it's just been a while. Roland Daggett, an evil businessman who we are seeing for the first time in this show, is trying to take over Wayne Enterprises. We have an actor, Matt Hagen, who was in a terrible car wreck, Daggett has gotten him hooked on a special face cream that fixes his face, but only temporarily. In exchange for a continuous supply of the cream, Hagen must do dirty jobs for Daggett. He attempts to get insider information on Wayne Enterprises from Bruce Wayne's partner Lucius Fox. This does not work out, so Daggett has his men kill Hagen. Instead of doing something quick and simple, like shooting him, Daggett's men come down with a terrible case of the the plot needs to happen in a certain way itis, and they pour what looks like two gallons of face cream on Hagen's face. Meanwhile, Batman finds out about Bruce Wayne being wanted by the police, and he has to go through a few obstacles to finally find out that Matt Hagen was impersonating Bruce Wayne. But it's too late, as Hagen is ready to kill Daggett's henchman who Batman is pumping for information. So Daggett is going on an eventual talk show with Summer Gleason. Hey, wait a minute, I thought she was just a reporter. Or is this another instance of the plot needs to happen in a certain way itis? Hagen shows up at the talk show to confront Daggett and presumably kill him. But Batman stops him and then Hagen fakes his death and gets away while Daggett is taken to prison. Cue credits. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good episode. I'm not entirely sure if it needed to be two parts, though. I think a lot of the stuff we have here, Bruce not being able to get any information out of Daggett's first henchman, going to Lucius, going to jail, getting out of jail, I think all of that is just filler so that we actually have enough to last two episodes. But I really think if you boiled down a lot of that stuff to the bare essentials, we could have had this episode happen in a normal 22-minute episode. That would mean losing the scene where Batman chases down the henchman in his Batplane. Which, don't get me wrong, I love that scene, and I would totally love to see Batman do this sort of terrorizing more often, but it runs so long and it ultimately adds nothing to the episode. The other reason I don't think this needed to be a two-parter is because it doesn't even feel like a two-parter. Compare this episode to the two-part Two-Face origin. That one really felt like two episodes that just happened to share characters. It even jumped forward six months in between episodes. While I had issues with that episode, it did feel like the two-part aspect was justified. But here, this feels like it was plotted out as an ordinary adventure, and then at some point down the line, someone decided that we needed an extra 20 minutes to tell the story. It ends on a cliffhanger, and it picks up immediately afterward where it left off. I don't know, maybe it's just that I don't like needlessly dragging out a story, and so whenever I see a two-part episode in TV where traditionally multi-part stories don't exist, my mind instantly says, oh, but did it really need to be that long? Maybe it did, and maybe I'm just conditioned to not like it. I don't know. I mentioned that we get Roland Daggett in this episode. We will be seeing him again in a few episodes in the future. This comes back to a complaint that I lodged against this series when I first started reviewing it. I'm okay with TV shows that are completely episodic, and you can watch the episodes in any order that you like. I'm also okay with TV shows that are serialized, and you really have to watch in a certain order. But this show tries to have its cake and eat it too. On the one hand, this is not the kind of show with a series arc or anything like that. On the one hand, this episode introduces Roland Daggett who does extremely illegal stuff and then we hear that he's in prison. 
But then we see him again in a few weeks down the line, seemingly out of prison, as if this episode did not even happen at all. I really like the idea of Bruce Wayne having corporate villains who don't necessarily interact with his Batman villains, but if this guy goes to prison, then shouldn't we at least have some kind of reference to him buying his way out, or there wasn't enough evidence to hold him, or something? I understand that this show was made in a time when it was unheard of that you had to watch episodes in a certain order, but this episode was at least made before the others with Daggett, right? I guess there's nothing else to say about this, and I seem to be spinning my wheels anyway. Moving on. One thing I really liked about this episode was that it really seems to combine the best of both worlds from the Two-Face episode and the Mr. Freeze episode. The Two-Face episode transformed a very minor character into a villain for us to see in the future, but the problem there was that I didn't feel very sorry for Harvey because I didn't think we really got a chance to know him very well. And then Heart of Ice, which introduced Mr. Freeze, I really did feel sorry for Mr. Freeze and in less time than it took for me to not feel sorry for Harvey. But after Freeze gets his revenge on his former boss, I don't ever feel like he would have any reason to turn to a life of crime again, which is a major failing in an episode that attempts to introduce a somewhat important villain to Batman's rogues gallery. This episode, like I say, finds a sweet spot. I feel sorry for Hagen, even though he is already basically a thug when we first meet him. We get just the right amount of tragedy in his life to make us understand that this is not the life he wants, yet he has little other choice. And unlike Mr. Freeze, this episode ends in such a way where I would buy him coming back as a villain. He is deformed, and with little to offer society, I could see him maybe taking on mercenary jobs or something, and the money, along with the thrill of acting, would be what entices him to this sort of life. I guess we'll see how this character is handled in the future. Overall, I did enjoy this episode. I thought it had some great Batman moments, it had a great villain added to the mix, and even though this episode kind of botches the introduction of Rowan Daggett, I like that we get a foe for Bruce Wayne as well. Even though this episode, and from what I remember all the other episodes that use Daggett, turn him into a foe for Batman instead of a foe for Bruce Wayne. So that's about all I have here, guys. I hope that this video found you well, and if it did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll be back next week with other videos for you guys to watch. And a week from today, I will be doing a review of an episode of the Legion of Superheroes cartoon. And the weekend after that, I'll be doing a review on another episode of Batman the Animated Series. So be sure to come back to see those videos. Until then, I hope you guys have a great weekend.